are watching the news on the hour brought to you from the Anglican Cable Network Nigeria ACNN. I am Zubechi Frank. You are welcome. In obedience to the commandment of Jesus, which states, Go ye into the world and preach the gospel to all nations, meeting the needs of the less privileged, visiting the sick and praying for one another. Haggai International FCT chapter have yielded to this commandment by paying a one-day visit to the sick at Metama District General Hospital in Abuja with some relief materials and some cash to go with. ACNN News correspondent Wan Neo Gechuku has the story. In keeping with the commission of our Lord Jesus Christ, in making disciples and reaching out to the sick and needy in the world, the FCT chapter of Agai International, on their international door of evangelism, took the gospel of Christ to Metama General Hospital, Metama District, Abuja. Huh? The group, which was led by the chairman of the association, Dr. Oluwale Aina, was welcomed by Metama General Hospital's compound officer, Mrs. Binta Ayodele, before proceeding to meet the chief medical director of the hospital. Armed with bags of gifts and cash, the group proceeded to the female world where they preached the word of God and prayed for the patients before distributing the gifts and cash to them. Why those who were taken to the theater were not left out? The group also visited the May world. They prayed and preached before distributing gifts and cash to the patient. Proceeding to the pediatric world, where they also prayed with the children and also give them gifts and cash before drawing the curtain for the day. Mrs. Binta Ayodele, the compound officer, appreciated the group for their love shown to the sick. She also urged other organizations and well-meaning Nigerians to imitate the group. The chairman of the body and some other members throw more light on what the body is all about. Mega International observe what you call uh, International Day of Evangelism. Today marks the day for this year. And so the FCT chapter, we decide to go out to reach out to the less privileged and those who have challenges to pray with them and to extend the love of the Lord Jesus Christ with them and share the healing power of the gospel. And we share gifts for them. Um, Haga Institute is a place where Christian leaders are you know, trained we go around sharing the goodness of the Lord Jesus Christ with all and sundry. And so we have come today to my Taman, maybe another time to another place. Uh, we feel delighted and privileged to, to share the joy you know, of knowing who Christ is and being compassionate to people who are in need, just like we too received that same compassion. We are celebrating our week of evangelism and um, we decided to visit the Maitama General Hospital where we were able to see the patients, to pray with them in the name of Jesus so that they will receive healing because Jesus is the great physician. When he was on earth, he healed everyone who came to him. The visit has been well received. The patients we know will come back with testimonies in the name of Jesus. We do quite a number of things. We train Christian leaders across board, all right, to be able to pass this good news to their people in their own culture, all right? We call it in the context of their own culture. So that's one of the major things we do is train, all right, Christian leaders. These leaders does not mean they have to be colored people, but those who are interested in influencing others, 
you know, with the life of Christ which they have received. So that's the major thing we do. Area of God's grace to reach out to people who have challenges, those who are in need. This is a way of saying thank you, Jesus, for what you have done for us and also extending a hand of fellowship even to people who have challenges. So we are begging people, begging organizations, begging societies, instead of eating everything, spending everything on themselves, they should also remember those in need and those in pain, most especially those in the hospital who cannot pay their bills, who have challenges in meeting one need or the other, even if they can pay all. Even coming around to encourage them will go a long way. Aga International is a global evangelistic initiative with the aim of ending gospel poverty, making disciples of Jesus, reaching out to the needy, and transforming nations through the gospel of Jesus Christ. Wane Ogechku, SNN News. President Muhammad Buhari will likely dissolve his cabinet before his inauguration for a second term in office. The Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, said Buhari won his re-election, pulling over 15 million votes to defeat Atiku Abubakar, his main challenger and presidential candidate of the People's Democratic Party, the PDP. Mr. Femi Adeshino, spokesman of President Buhari, in an interview on a recorded TV program, said the president is expected to officially dissolve his cabinet at the expiration of the first tenor on May 29th. That mandate lapses on May 29th. And shortly before May 29th, the president is likely going to officially dissolve government. That is the way it is usually done. He says thank you to everybody that he has called to work with him, and uh, he dissolves that government officially. Then, when he is inaugurated for a second term, he now reconstitutes government. He, re he, he, he appoints his personal aides, he forms the cabinet, he appoints people to fill other positions. When he was talking to your sister station, um, uh, oh no, the newspaper, the newspaper uh, this day, this day, yes, a couple of weeks back, he said it. He was asked pointedly, will it take the same six months it took before you form the cabinet if you win a second term? And he said, no, it wouldn't take that long. So that's the answer. It wouldn't take long. Meanwhile, the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, says it will hold supplementary elections on March 9th alongside the governorship and state houses of assembly elections. The National Commissioner and Chairman Information and Voter Education Committee, Festus Okoye, stated these in a statement issued on Friday. According to this statement, supplementary elections will be held in all the areas where election did not take place and the places where returns could not be made. The decision to hold the supplementary election was taken at the end of their meeting. During the meeting, the INEC officials identified different anomalies that happened during the presidential elections. They decried a number of cancellations in certain areas due to violence. They also assessed the role of security agencies during the elections. The commission thereafter condoled with the families of ad hoc staff who lost their lives during the national assignment, as well as all the Nigerians who died at the cause of the elections. The graduates of the National Open University of Nigeria can now be mobilized for the National Youth Service Corps and also attend the Nigerian Law School. The pro-chancellor of the institution, Professor Peter Okebukala, said the recent signing of its Amendment Act 2018 will place NAM on the same level with all recognized universities in Nigeria. Okebukala made the statement at a news conference in Lagos. According to him, the act recently gazetted and published on December 3rd 2018 will further strengthen the university to provide open and distant learning opportunities to millions of Nigerians. Okebukola therefore praised the Tertiary Education Trust Fund, also known as Debt Fund, for intervening in capital development and staff capacity building in Noun, and also urged the Trust Fund to continue funding the Noun because it is a specialized university that enrolls the largest number of students in Nigeria. 
A black street preacher believed to be a Nigerian man was arrested in London, apparently for an alleged breach of the peace as he preached the gospel outside Southgate Underground Station. He was later de-arrested. According to a Metropolitan Police spokesman, the preacher pleaded peacefully with two white police officers not to take away his Bible in a humiliating arrest. They placed his arms behind his back in handcuffs and took the Bible from him. In a verbal exchange recorded in a two-minute video, one officer tells the unidentified preacher that he was required to go away because he was disturbing people's days. But the preacher responded that he needed to tell people the truth about Jesus Christ. An eyewitness reported that before arrival of the police, the preacher was being confronted aggressively by a young man, apparently Muslim, and in his 20s, wearing a hooded top. The man was loudly abusive about the Bible and God, with his face close to the preacher's. The young man also threatened to the preacher, brandishing a closed first holding prayer beats. When the police arrived to question the street preacher, they were witnessed saying that there had been a complaint of Islamophobia made against him. The young man ran away from the scene as soon as the police arrived. We shall now go on a short commercial break. News on the hour continues in a moment. Please stay with us. Invest in spreading the word of God this year, 2019, as you join the 3,000 ACNN Kingdom Investment Partners with a token as low as 2,000 per month or 30,000 per annum. Register at www w.akip.acnntv.com For details, call 234-823-232-1280 or 234-703-265654 Watch ACNN TV on the internet enabled device by visiting www.acnntv.com slash tv God bless you as you watch ACNN in Jesus name You are welcome back and thanks for staying tuned For more on our top stories please visit our website at acnntv.com or youtube.com forward slash acnntv To be up to date with our news and other programs download the ACNN app for Android from Google Play Store. And now to foreign news. The Anglican Communion Office at the United Nations is taking a delegation of seven women to New York from 11th to 22nd of March 2019 for the 63rd annual meeting of the UN Commission on the Status of Women. Eight women were chosen, but one member of the delegation was denied a visa by the U.S. authorities. This year, the 45 U.N. member states who are members of the Commission will discuss social protection systems, access to public services and sustainable infrastructure for gender equality and the empowerment of women and girls. These include issues such as access to health and education systems. As in recent years, the U.S.-based Episcopal Church will also have an official delegation at the event. The Anglican Mission Agency's Mothers' Union and USPG will also be present. The delegates were chosen from the U.S.-based Episcopal Church, Anglican Church of Burundi, Scottish Episcopal Church, the Anglican Communion in Japan, Anglican Church of Melanesia, Anglican Church of Southern Africa, Church of the Province of West Africa, and Anglican Church in Ateria, New Zealand and Polynesia. The United States has congratulated the people of Nigeria on a successful presidential election and President Muhammadu Buhari on his re-election. In a statement issued by the Secretary of State, Michael R. Pompeo, he stated that the United States remains committed to working together with Nigeria to achieve greater peace and prosperity for both nations. 
He also noted that assessment of international and domestic observer missions affirming the overall credibility of the election despite localized violence and irregularities. While congratulating all the other candidates for their peaceful participation in the electoral process, he called on all Nigerians to ensure successful state elections next week. The death toll from a powerful car bombing, explosion and clashes between security forces and gunmen near a hotel in the Somalia capital, Mogadushi, has risen to 18. An extremist group claimed that a Magadushi hospital was the intended target, but a police officer said militants detonated a bomb while trying to assassinate a judge. The car bomb went off near the residence of appeal court chief judge Abashir Omar and security forces stationed outside the judge's house fought off gunmen who tried to force their way inside. According to police, at least 40 others were injured in the attack and that toll could rise as many as, as many of the wounded are still being treated in hospitals. Two witnesses said the blast ripped off part of the roof of Omar's house. The witnesses, shopkeeper Ahmed Mohammed and every resident Fatima Noor, reported hearing gunfire after the explosion and said smoke billowed from the site of the attack. An earthquake with a magnitude of 7.0 struck southeastern Peru. The epicenter of the quake was at a depth of 257 kilometers, that is 160 miles. The agency said most big quakes in South America occur at a depth of 70 kilometers or higher. The quake hit at 8.50 GMT, about 27 kilometers northeast of the town of Azangaru near the border with Bolivia. The United States is offering a reward of up to $1 million for information about one of the sons of the late Al-Qaeda leader Osama bin Laden. According to officials, Hamza bin Laden is emerging as a leader of the Islamist militant group. He is thought to be based near the Afghan-Pakistani border. In recent years, he has released audio and video messages calling on followers to attack the U.S. and its Western allies in revenge for his father's killing. In 2011, U.S. Special Forces killed Osama bin Laden in a compound in Abotad, Pakistan. He approved the attacks on the U.S. on 11 September 2001, in which nearly 3,000 people were killed. Moving on to sports, Manchester United have stopped approaching other coaches, leaving interim boss Ole Gunnar Solskjaer as the only serious candidate to succeed Jose Mourinho as full-time manager. Despite the United's determination to seek a high-profile coach to replace Mourinho following his sacking on December 18th last year, sources claim Solskjaer has moved ahead of Tottenham's and Ju Juventus coaches. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has guided United to 12 wins and 2 draws during his short spell at Old Trafford, losing only once to Paris Saint-Germain PSG in the Champions League. The run of form has seen the Red Devils close an 11-point deficit on the top four positions to currently sit one point adrift of fourth place Arsenal in the Premier League. The team has also reached the FA Cup quarterfinals, having eliminated Arsenal and Chelsea away from home in their early rounds. So it's on that note that we draw the curtain on this edition of the News on the R. I want to thank you for watching. I am Zubechi Frank.